Hey everyone, it's Brido here, and I've got the fifth episode of our New York Islanders BGM series for you guys today. Uh, upon request, we're switching up the pace of the episodes a little bit, going to get more content in on a shorter time. So in this episode, we have about five games along with um, just coming in actually under 20 minutes for the first time. So yeah, the first game we had uh, in the set of games is between the New York Islanders and the Toronto Maple Leafs. We've had a great start of the season so far, guys. We've gone 4-2 and two after a little bit of a rocky start. Jakob Markstrom comes into the net and has done a great job for us, as you can see from his stats right here. Four wins, a goals uh, against of 1.40, and a save percentage of 914. He's been the ticket for us, you know, one kind of iffy game, but besides from that, great goaltending has really uh, given us a chance to win every night, and that's what we really uh, have uh, thrived on thus far, because we've uh, got a winning record so far, which is something I wasn't expecting going into this. So early on in the first period, we get a nice goal here from Mark Streit to start off the game. As the second goal of the season, a quick goal from him, and we get the ball rolling in the right direction to start the period. Here, though, Markstrom is tested to make a big save on the breakaway, and then we move up here about five minutes left in the first period. Matt Martin with a shot and a goal for himself, first goal of the season for Matt Martin. He's been doing a great job on the fourth line, being serviceable fourth line player for us doing the penalty kills and whatnot. But there he gets his first goal of the season, and that moves us up to a two nothing lead so far. So yeah, guys, this has been great. Uh, Start for us in this game, an overall great start to the season. We're now 4-2, and two, and uh, we're having an opportunity here to go up even more. Something that, you know, I wasn't expecting. We had a tough start to the season, you know, losing to Philadelphia and losing to Pittsburgh. I was saying this is going to be a long, rough season. We're going to have a lot of troubles. I'm not going to be able to even, uh, you know, contest for a playoff spot. But we'll be able to kind of turn it around and whatnot. And we're doing that, so, and so uh, the next episode, I've changed the difficulty to hardcore instead of just uh, default to give a little bit more of a challenge there. So, as you can see from that goal as well, we're up to 3 nothing now. Steven Weiss gets his uh, first goal of the season, and again, a really nice lucky one. Uh, we'll, we'll keep taking the lucky ones as they keep coming our way, but you know, eventually that luck is probably going to run out, so we'll try and uh, hatch it down as many lucky goals as we possibly can while we can still get them. Here's the end of the second period, guys. We're now up 3 nothing going into the third period. Pretty comfortable position to be in. And uh, starting the third period, we're looking to shut this one down and get our fifth win of the season and, uh, yeah, get or get Marshall another win as well, a fifth win for him. All our wins have been coming from him thus far, which has been great to see as well. Here's uh, Grabner with a great chance. Reimer, a little bit of a shaky save, but still gets the job done. There's Van Riemsdijk, though. 13 minutes left. Gets the first goal for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and they're on the board now. Uh, game gets a little bit tighter here. Eight minutes left. Lombardi of a chance. It's in front of the net. Uh, good save, though, from Markstrom. Now a bad giveaway in front of the net leads to Kessel getting a goal there. And now we're in the position of only having a one-goal lead with uh, three minutes left, so a tough finish to the game here. But Strike makes a big hip check there with a minute left in the game. Molson comes up the ice. Saved by uh, Reimer there, and we're trying to get the puck back. Molson with another chance gets hit off the puck. Deveris is able to get off the boards. Back to Molson. He works it around. Comes at the front of the slot, Grabner trying to get it, Molson gets it back again, we score, there we go, two goal lead is back in our favor, another lucky goal, but nonetheless, we are back in the driver's seat, and we have eight seconds left to close this one out, guys, we beat the Toronto Maple Leafs, 4-2 is the final of this one, we're now up to a 5-2 record on the season, which is more than anything that I could have asked for, to be honest, at the beginning of the season, and with that as well, Marsham gets his fifth win of the season, guys, here's the highlight of the game. The Stephen Weiss goal that goes right through Reimer's legs. That's the win for us, 4-2 and now 5-2 record. Like I said, great start. Super excited with where this team's going so far. Strom, two assists, and Stephen Weiss getting rewarded with the uh, first start of the game there. Uh, now we move on to an AHL game that we have. We got the 5-2 win against the Springfield there. And uh, our team's doing all right down there in the AHL, you know. It, we don't have as many prospects as I like on the team. That's something I'm going to look to in the future. Um, you know, you guys have been mentioning uh, guys that we can go with. Brandon McMillan actually sounds like a really good player to pick up. He's a little bit more of a, an NHL guy, but it's someone I'm going to look to in the future to make a trade for. Here, though, we started the game against the Boston Bruins. And as you can see, and Evgeny Nabokov is making the start for us. No wins on the season yet. But we're giving him the start just because uh, Marsham has been doing a great job, but we want to, you know, spread the, uh, the, the games out, essentially, between the two of them. You know, Markstrom is going to get those 60... Uh, or so games, but we want Nabokov to still give him some rest time, and uh, he's still a serviceable uh, goaltender as well, so we'll give him plenty of chances to uh, win games for us. Here, though, to start of the game, he uh, isn't showing his worth very much there with a bad goal going against us, and we're down one nothing heading into the second period here as the uh, period finishes up. 
Um, yeah, overall this period was uh, a little bit more challenging. Boston is definitely a tough team to play. I mean, from what I've experienced so far, you know, the goaltenders really matter when you're playing against them, and uh, no, no team really has that much of a better goaltender than Boston Bruins do of Tim Thomas. Obviously, in real life, he's going to be taking a year off um, from playing, but in this game, he's still in, and he's still their starter. So there you can see a really nice chance for us, and to close out the period, we get another one there. But that's pretty much it for the second as well, guys. We're still down one nothing, so really tight game, tight scoring affair, and um, Boston Bruins are controlling most of the play. We're getting some of the good chances, though, and uh, we're, we're at this point, though, kind of feeling like we're under the gun and we're lucky to be in this one so far. There Nabokov gets the puck back, is able to clear it out. Now a uh, nice chance from Bergeron here, but a big save by Nabokov. After that shaky first goal, he's able to keep it a relatively close game. Here, though, with um, about eight minutes left in the period, Thomas passes to Mateau, and we actually poke the puck in off Mateau. So another really lucky goal. Marty Reasoner there gets the goal for us, and... Um, we, we, uh, we get lucky once again. We're really uh, working those pucks in our favor versus it going against us. Here's Ocposo, too, with a third, uh, getting a goal there, number two for him on the season. That's 2-1 lead for us with three minutes left, guys. This could be a smash and grab. We're really close to getting the win here. Now with only a minute left, it's back in our zone. Krejci passes it to Seidenberg at the point, and a big open net for Sagan. He gets a nice goal there to tie the game up. Only 58 seconds now. Game, uh, like I said, was in Boston's favor, so they really deserved that goal. But here out the faceoff, Weiss gets a chance, can't really get the puck. 16 seconds left, we clear it up the ice. Boys is able to work his way to the puck. Cuts back, passes it to Nielsen. Nielsen scores, 9 seconds left, guys. We actually just steal this one in the last seconds of the game here. And uh, that will be another win for us, guys. We're up to 6-2 now on the season. So lots of wins and lots of uh, positive signs along with some... Uh, Nice squeaky goals for us as well. So there's the, the game ending there. Boston probably is in disbelief at this point because they really controlled most of the play. There's the game winning goal from Nielsen. Somehow gets through Thomas and uh, we get the 3-2 win moving us up to 6-2 on the season. There we are as well looking at the stats after the game. Really low shot counter. Andrew Ferentz getting the top star of the game. And uh, yeah, there's uh, Tim Thomas there. You know, played a great game but a little bit of a couple of goals that probably shouldn't have gone against him. One was a little bit more of the defender's fault, but nonetheless, uh, still bad overall. There's our, another game we had with uh, Bridgeport. They lost 7-1 to the Worcester Sharks, so not that great of a game for them. But after that, we move on to playing the Ottawa Senators here. In this game, we're really excited to play it, obviously, because, I mean, we're still on that roll. We're still doing really good at this point, and um, Ottawa's a team we can really probably beat, so... We're looking to, you know, actually move up even higher on the, the table. There's Markstrom back in net again after a, a break uh, against the Boston Bruins. And, um, yeah, we're right now we're, we're not uh, the division leaders. I will have the, the division um, settings of where we are in the standings and um, just overall where we are in the Eastern Conference. But for now, we're just going to go with uh, this game here. Uh, there's a nice uh, opportunity for Michael Grabner, and he gets a goal for us as well, guys. That's a one nothing lead. Michael Grabner has just been amazing, rushing uh, plays all the time. There was a nice goal for him, obviously. And uh, here's another chance that uh, just should have gone in, but maybe the luck is turning us uh, against us a little bit there. Another chance here, nice save by Anderson. Um, you know, still, like I said, regarding the luck, we're going to need a lot more bad plays going against us to make up for all the nice, um, nice chances that have been saved or just, you know, overall lucky goals we've got. Just like that one there, Teresa scores pretty much, but it's, you know, the clock runs out right on the, the button there right before he scores. So, still a 1-0 lead for us going into the second period. Game was pretty much even at this point. Uh, Ottawa getting good chances. Markstrom playing a pretty good net. Really, the start of this game, though, is Michael Grabner there again getting another chance. He was just running all over the ice, and he does a little bit of back skating there. Gets right in front of the net and uh, just misses scoring another goal there for us. Now with about 7 minutes left here, Cowan comes in, big slap shot, rebound right at the front of the slot, and Dovins, Dogovins gets the goal there. And it's a 1-1 one -one game now with 7 minutes left in the second period. So we're back to square one, tied game, and uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're fighting in this one. This one's a tight game, and um, there's a, a little bit of a squeaky goal in Markstrom. Uh, Matt Gilray from the point gets a goal, leading uh, the, the Sens down to a 2-1 lead. So now we're one goal down, and we haven't been down in the game for a while now, so... We're going to have to fight back in this game after uh, kind of being on the, the the easy seat, not really having to deal with that much pressure for a while now. So starting the third period, 
We are uh, looking for that tying goal to get this game back to square one and back to possibly overtime for us. Here, Grabner just activates fast uh, skating there. Nice save by Anderson. Probably should have done more of the play. Wasn't able to do it, though. Five minutes left in the period. We get a power play. And off the power play, we get a nice chance here, but can't convert it. Weiss comes around the net. Nice little uh, wrap around there. But Anderson makes a save as well. Here, Ottawa gets a nice chance to pad their lead, but they're not able to do it. And now, uh, Grabner coming down the slot. Nice wrist shot. And Molson there is able to jam it in somehow. And we're back to a tie game, guys. Matt Molson with seven goals on the season. Unbelievable start from him after having a little bit of a slow start in the first couple games. He's really caught fire, and he's our top scorer now. There's Jamie Olesiak coming all the way from the point. Does a nice little move. Here he tries to do something similar after getting the confidence to do so, but gives it away to Spezza. Now the clock winding down, Spezza gets a chance, but big save by Markstrom to keep this game tied, and we're going to OT, guys. First OT game of the season. We're going to see if we have the medal to do anything in it and see if we can pull a win out in the overtime period, get our uh, record to 7-2 and two after, you know, obviously having a lot of great wins so far on this season. Here we're just finishing up the period as not very many chances happen. Big chance in front of the slot. Spets of two big shots on the net, but Markstrom with the big saves to keep this one going to uh, the shootout instead of finishing early on here. Um, but yeah, we're going to go to the shootout now, guys. And we'll see how Markstrom can handle the chances from Ottawa. Carlson's the first chance. Big save. Grabner comes in. Nice moves and scores a goal. Like I said, big impact in this game, guys. Now Spets are coming in. Gets the goal. It's a tied 1-1 here. John Deveris tries to do a little spin move. Shot there just wide. Still 1-1, and now McCall comes in. Big move, and ah, oh, just gets in somehow. And now we got Molson here needing the score to keep this game in action, and he isn't able to do it, guys. We lose the game in overtime, unfortunately, but that's all right. We did a, a pretty good game against the Ottawa Senators, tried our best, and uh, pretty proud of the boys, even though we weren't able to get the game winner in the shootout. So as you can see, guys, from the box scores, it was a relatively tight game of plenty of shots at hand. Markstrom and Anderson deserving stars, and Michael Grabner getting the uh, first star of the game for his performance. Plenty of shots, a goal, and also that shootout goal as well, even though it went in vain as we lost the game. Here we're moving on to our next game, guys, against the uh, Carolina Hurricanes, who have been on fire to start the season. So we've really got a challenge to start up against this one. You can see Markstrom with great stats so far, but Cam Ward... Amazing goals against average and save percentage to start the season. He is really on fire, and we're going to have a challenge to beat him in this game. So here we go, guys. Starting up the game, obviously, it's a tough challenge that we're going to have at hand here. Cam Ward playing amazing in net, and they now have guys like Jordan Stahl and Alexander Semin to help them out scoring. And there's Alexander Semin showing what he can do, getting the first goal of the game only three minutes in there. We, uh, we're, we're worried to start, like I said. Looking at Cam Ward's stats, I was feeling a little bit worried. Here's another chance, and Samson gets a goal with a minute left in the game, or a minute left in the first period. Uh, so yeah, it's a tough start to the first period, and uh, that finishes off, guys. We're down 2-0 to start the first, so not the best start to the period. Here, though, we uh, move on, and they're going to keep the ball rolling in their favor with a power play. And uh, later on in the power play, they get a chance right here, a little dangle, and Jokinen gets a nice goal after missing uh, on the first wrister if it was a... A little bit of a fake out there. It definitely worked on Markstrom. We're down 3 0 now, guys, and still really early in the second period. And Nolo gets another goal. This one is not going our way. We choose to let Markstrom have a break. He's been playing great for us. But we don't want to, you know, sacrifice him in this game to have a terrible outing. Here we decide to drop the gloves. I rarely do. We, uh, we lose the fight to Alexander Semin. Mr. Slappy slaps us silly, and we are down 4 0 now. 5 0, guys. We're just going to skip ahead here. It's all downhill. We get Niederreiter for goal there at 5-1. But as the period ends, guys, we lose this game in terrible fashion. We just weren't able to do the job. Uh, as you can see, misery around as we're now to 6-3-1. and one. Plenty of chances their way. And there's the, the goal that they decided to choose as the highlight of the game. Plenty of highlights for the Carolina Hurricanes as they light us up. Uh, as you can see, 5-1 were the goals. 23 shots for us, but we just couldn't beat Cam Ward. Cam Ward padding his stats even more than they already were beforehand. And yeah, there um, we're going to move to now uh, Markstrom, whose stats are going to dip a little bit after being pulled relatively early in the game and not having that great of a performance. Here's a game against the uh, Hershey Bears. We win 5-1 as the Bridgeport Sound Tigers. Doing good, like I said. Seems like it's a win-lose situation pretty much, but we got to win there and uh, keep the ball rolling in the AHL. Now back to the NHL. We're facing the Dallas Stars to finish up this video, guys. Kerry Lettinen, another guy I've been doing great so far. 
as punishment for losing that game so badly, I decided to use the third jerseys. What a lovely set those guys are. Sarcasm. <laughs> and uh, Nabokov is now starting this game. We're giving uh, Markstrom a break for two reasons. Obviously, didn't have the best game there. And also because he uh, this is a back-to-back -back night. We want to give back-to-back -back starts to Nabokov. So it's at least a little bit uh, split up. So it's not always Markstrom starting the games. So yeah, here we go. Uh, there's a big save by Nabokov to start. Uh, about 14 minutes in there. And there's a goal, though, uh, about two minutes left in the first period. A real weak one. Nabokov seems to like to give away one squeaker a game or so. We're going to have to live with it, unfortunately, because, like I said, we want to give uh, Markstrom some breaks every once in a while. But ending the first period there, guys, we're down one nothing going into the second here. So after a relatively good start to the video and relatively good start to the season, we're still 6-3-1, and but we've uh, lost the game in the shootout, been blown out by the Carolina Hurricanes. We're now down one nothing in this game really don't want to lose another game especially after all the progress that we've made there's boys with a big chance but just isn't able to put it away six minutes left here a uh, nice chance from the point isn't able to go now uh, the Dallas Stars going the other way cross crease pass goes in the net nice trim with the goal there it's a two nothing lead now for the Dallas Stars we're now behind the driver's seat a little bit we need to get back into this one quickly if we're gonna have any chance Ben with a shot there and another shot and it's a goal, guys. This one is going the way of the other one, unfortunately. We're down 3-0. The good part, though, is uh, as the second period ends, we don't give up any more chances. We almost get one for ourselves there. So we've got a task to fulfill here as we finish up the game. With 20 minutes left, we have a chance to get back in this one. We need to score three goals to so at least push it to OT if we can. But as you can see, the period goes by pretty quick. We're still down with only four minutes left. We get a power play, though, and Vishnovsky is able to work his way around. Come all the way in. Nice little move here. Backhand goal. That's his first goal of the season, guys. And we get up to just a two-goal uh, deficit now of three and four, or three minutes and 45 seconds left. But unfortunately for us, we're not really able to do much more with it. They get a chance there, but the period really ends. Vishnovsky trying to do uh, a little bit more magic to get within one goal. Doesn't work out. And we lose this game as well, guys. So now we're up to 6-4-1. Uh, um, not completely terrible, obviously, but we're really at a point that we could have potentially gone all the way to 7-2, um, and two, which would have been an amazing record. Now we're sitting at 6-4-1, and one, which is still good, obviously. Like I said, we have to temper our expectations. This is a team that is still developing, still building, and it's going to take time to do so. But a little bit disappointing that we're at that point now. Um, here, though, to finish off the video, I want to show you guys the stats for the season after 11 games. Molson is our top point getter and goal scorer of 7 goals. There's Strom and Weiss with 6 points each, and Tavares at 9 as well. So overall, overall the guys are doing pretty good. Akposo have four points there, the, the D-men getting some goals as well, Niederreiter four points, and the very bottom list you got Yuensu with uh, two points, and um, Matt Martin as well there. Here's uh, the goaltenders obviously, Marsham still actually have pretty good goals against average at 2.0 after that game, but his uh, save percentage has dipped pretty traumatically after that, we're going to hope to build that back up, and then the Bakov there still doing a good job, but just uh, obviously letting in more squeakers than good ones anyway. Here's the Western Conference standings as it is right now, guys. You can see the top of the standings there. And Minnesota sits the bottom. Uh, in the east, we have Pittsburgh at top, Montreal and Carolina. Following them up is the Bruins, guys. And then us sitting pretty at fifth right now, which is pretty good, even though we had a disappointing end to the episode. Uh, but that's it for this one, guys. You can see as well uh, the Atlantic Division standings. Let me know if you like the quicker highlights as we obviously got through more videos. Is that something you like to see in the future? What you'd like to see a little bit more of, what you'd like to see a little bit less, so we can tweak this to the, the comfort of what you guys want to see the most. Uh, there'll be another episode coming in the near future along of Hockey Ultimate Team and uh, BGM Connected as well. That's it for now though guys, hope you enjoyed.